My dear friends, let us begin our liturgical celebration today by saying together the Novena prayers in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, create a bless and in our souls take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the Send for thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people by sending them the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through Christ our Lord. Amen. An act of contrition, my God, I believe in thee. I hope in thee, I love thee above all things, with all my soul, with all my heart, and with all my strength. I love thee, because thou art infinitely good, and worthy of being loved. And because I love thee, I repent with all my heart of having offended thee. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Invocation to Our Lady. We fly to thy patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities, but ever deliver us from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. O Mother of Purpose Succor, thou whose very name inspires confidence, help me, O loving Mother, that I may love and serve God with all my heart. Help me, O loving Mother that I may never neglect prayer. Help me, O loving Mother. In temptations against the holy virtue of purity, help me, O loving Mother, that I may quickly rise again, should I have the misfortune to fall into sin. Help me, O loving Mother, that I may courageously resist the seductions of the world, evil companions, and bad books and films. Help me, O loving Mother that I may often and devoutly receive the sacraments and fulfill my Christian duties and the duties of my state. Help me, O loving Mother. That I may be patient and resigned in all trials and troubles of life. Help me, O loving Mother. In sickness and pain, in poverty and distress. Help me, O loving Mother. That I may not delay my conversion from day to day. Help me, O loving Mother that I may ever love and serve thee and invoke thy assistance. Help me, O loving Mother. That I may be able to lead others to love, serve, and pray to thee. Help me, O loving Mother. When death is near and I am about to pass into eternity. Help me, O loving Mother. To my last hour, to my last breath, do thou watch over me. Help me, O loving Mother. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of Purpose Sako that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who in order to assist the human race, has willed the Blessed Virgin Mary to become the mother of thy only begotten Son, grant we beseech thee that by her intercession we may avoid the contagion of sin and serve thee with a pure heart through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Vina prayers. O Mother of Purpose Succor, behold me a miserable sinner at thy feet. I have recourse to thee and put my trust in thee. O Mother of Mercy, have pity upon me. 
I hear thee call by all, the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be then my refuge and my hope. Succor me for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch forth thy hand to me, a poor sinner, who recommend and dedicate myself to thee as thy perpetual servant. I bless and thank God for having in his mercy given me this confidence in thee, the pledge, as I believe, of my eternal salvation. Alas, too often in past times have I miserably fallen, because I had not recourse to thee. I know that with thy help I shall conquer. I know that thou wilt help me if I recommend myself to thee. But I fear lest in the occasion of falling I should cease to call upon thee and so should lose my soul. This then is the grace I seek from thee. And I beg of thee, as far as I know how one can, to obtain it for me, namely in the assaults of hell, always to have recourse to thee and to say to thee, O oh Mary, help me, Mother of Perpetual Succor, suffer me not to lose my God. Amen. Mother of Perpetual Succor, pray for thy children. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst the women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Mother of Perpetual Succor, pray for thy children. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst the women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Mother of Perpetual Succor, pray for thy children. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst the women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, succor the miserable, help the faint-hearted, cheer those that weep, pray for the people, be the advocate of the clergy, intercede for all devout women. Let all feel thine aid who implore thy perpetual succor. Thou hast been made for us, O Lady, a refuge, a helper in need and tribulation. Let us pray, O Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us thy mother Mary, whose wondrous image we venerate, to be our mother, ever ready to succor us. Grant we beseech thee, that we, who earnestly implore her maternal aid, may deserve to enjoy perpetually the fruit of thy redemption, who lives and reigns world without end. Amen. Amen. The final hymn. gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to a protection, implored thy help, sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my Mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate. Despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Let us now have the entrance hymn.
is offered for the following intentions for the good health of the sick and all in our parish for the soul of Mary Fernandez by a parishioner for the speedy recovery of Brigitte Pereira by Sanidya for the soul of Nirmala Ben Joseph by Alex Joseph and family thanksgiving and special intention by AK Joseph and family for the soul of P.T. Sebastian by Susan and family for the soul of Mrs. Maureen Jack Bell by Jack Bell and family, for the soul of Vanessa Vargis by Vargis and family, for the souls of Julia Lobo, Joseph Santos, and Nirmala Joseph by B.T. Fernandez, for the gift of life of Bellarmine Fernandez by Serena Lawrence, and for the soul of B.G. Joseph who passed away this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, today the Holy Mother Church celebrates the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. If you look at the last 150 years of Catholicism, one thing that we can very clearly see is that there were a number of apparitions by Mother Mary in different parts of the world. Fatima, Lourdes, Guadalupe, Velangani, and so on. All these apparitions basically indicate that Mother Mary deeply cares for the church. Mother Mary deeply cares for each one of us. In fact, we also had two important dogmas on Mother Mary during these 150 years. We have a dogma on Immaculate Conception. We also have a dogma on Assumption of Mother Mary. Now coming concretely to this apparition in Fatima, we know that it happened on 13th of May, 1917. She appeared to three little children. In her apparition to these children, she reminded the children to recite the Holy Rosary every day. She also asked the children to pray for the conversion of Russia. Now what was the context in which this apparition happened? That is very important. We must remember that the First World War was going, the world was in ruins. Secularism, secularism in the sense of no religion, no God, was picking up momentum. The communist movements were also picking up momentum. As a result, so many churches were being closed. Priests, nuns and lay people were martyred for their faith. So this was the context in which Mary makes this apparition. And if you look at the whole message of Mother Mary in this apparition, basically they invite us to two things. The first, conversion. And the second, reparation for our sins. Conversion and reparation for our sins. And I think this message has serious significance in today's context also. The present situation invites us to turn to God more intensely. 
the present situation invites us to restructure our life, to have some kind of inner engineering of our lives. The present situation also gives us the possibility to do reparation for our sins. The recent popes of the Catholic Church, beginning with John the 23rd, John Paul II, Benedict XVI, Pope Francis, all these popes had a special devotion to Our Lady of Fatima. In fact, Pope Francis has dedicated his papacy to the patronage of Our Lady of Fatima. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, with this introduction in our mind, let us also consecrate our lives, our parish, to Our Lady of Fatima. To celebrate this Mass in a worthy manner, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and pray for a genuine experience of conversion by saying together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, our Virgin, we may set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some men came down from Judea and taught the brothers, unless you have yourselves circumcised in the tradition of Moses, you cannot be saved. This led to disagreement, and after Paul and Barnabas had had a long argument with these men, it was arranged that Paul and Barnabas and others of the church should go up to Jerusalem and discuss the problem with apostles and elders. All the members of the church saw them off, and as they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the pagans had been converted, and this news was received with the great satisfaction by the brothers. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and by the apostles and elders and gave an account of all that God had done with them. But certain members of the Pharisees' party, who had become believers, objected, insisting that the pagans should be circumcised and instructed to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to look into the matter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response is, I rejoiced when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. I rejoiced when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. I rejoiced when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Response, I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. Jerusalem is built as a city, strongly compact. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Response, I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. For Israel's law, it is there to praise the Lord's name. There were set the thrones of judgment of the house of David. Your response? I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. Gospel acclamation. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and my own know me. Alleluia. Cleanse my, hearts and my, cleanse my heart and my lips, O Lord, that I may worthily proclaim your word. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true wine, and my father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he cuts away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the word that I have spoken to you. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the wine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the wine and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me, in him, bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, a few short reflections on the readings of the day. In the first reading, we see the conflict between Peter and the Jewish disciples on the one hand, Paul, Barnabas, and the Gentile Christians on the other. Now, what is the point of contention? The point of contention is whether the Gentile Christians have to follow the Mosaic law, including circumcision. And of course, gradually, the disciples will come together and beautifully they would resolve this conflict. The little reflection that I make today is, I believe that as far as our faith is concerned, our religion or religiosity is concerned, we must learn to make a distinction between what is essential and what is not that essential, what is negotiable and what is non-negotiable. This distinction has to be very clear. Otherwise, we end up making either too many compromises as far as our faith is concerned or we end up becoming fundamentalist. For example, which right you follow is negotiable. While celebrating Mass, whether you must have two altars, negotiable. But as far as our commitment to Jesus is concerned, as far as our sense of communion is concerned, as far as our sense of mission is concerned, it is non-negotiable. So that distinction has to be very clear. Coming into the Gospel reading of the day, the Lord is using a beautiful metaphor, the wine and the branches. This metaphor, this metaphor invites us to think of a few things. The first, I think this metaphor beautifully reminds us this beautiful indwelling that is there between God the Father, Jesus and we, the disciples. Indwelling. What do I mean by it? We are told that God the Father is the wine dresser, Jesus is the wine and we are the branches. So there is a beautiful web of a relationship. I think we must enjoy and live our faith, keeping in mind this beautiful relationship that we enjoy. Secondly, I think this metaphor reminds us to examine uh, the quality or the depth of our relationship with Jesus. Jesus is the wine and we are the branches. We ask ourselves, how united are we with Jesus? And finally, I think this metaphor also invites us to examine how effective, how fruitful our lives are as Christians. The effectiveness or fruitfulness of our life as Christians. The Lord says very clearly, you cannot bear fruit unless you are united with me and in me. 
How do we examine whether our lives are fruitful or not? Look at the quality of our capacity to love. Look at the quality of our capacity to forgive. Look at our ability to translate our love into charity. These are all some parameters by which we can examine and see how fruitful, how effective our life is. Today, as we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Fatima through Mother Mary's intercession, let us pray for all of us that as we continue our journey of life, we may deepen our relationship with Jesus and we may also pray that our lives may become more and more effective and fruitful in the vineyard of the Lord. Offertory. Pray, my dear friends, that our sacrifice this morning may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo a thankful hymn of praise. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed a holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of our faith. So we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Ratna Swami, our Bishop, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people of God. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, very specially, we pray for the souls of Mary Fernandez, Nirmala Ben Joseph, Peter Sebastian, Maureen Jack, Vanessa Vargis, Julia Lobo, Joseph Santos, and B.G. Joseph. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer one another the peace of the risen Lord. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love and revere you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you, Lord never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Listen to his commands to 
Prayer for the eradication of COVID-19. Dear Jesus, divine physician and healer of the sick, we turn to you in our time of need. Comfort with your grace those who are troubled. Alleviate our worry and sorrow with your gentle love and grant us the grace and strength to face the COVID-19. Graciously restore those to health very especially we remember Brigitta, who have fallen ill, and grant us the grace to acknowledge your holy will. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. As we have the blessing of the sick, let us very especially remember all those who are sick in our parish. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Lord, hear my prayer, and let, and let my, my cry come, come unto thee. thee. The Lord be with you. And with you also. Let us pray. Grant we beseech thee, O Lord, that these thy servants may enjoy perpetual health of mind and body, and by the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, our Virgin, be delivered from present sorrow and, in, and enjoy eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be amongst you, to defend you, within you to preserve you, before you to guide you, after you to guard you, above, above you to bless you, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And through the intercession of our Mother of Purpose Sucker, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us forever and ever. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm delighted to share with you the greatest event that has happened to humanity 100 years ago. 
It is the story of Fatima, a message from heaven that is for every living person on the planet. It is a message of peace and a call to live holy lives. I know that may sound unbelievable, but in a moment you'll see how it all came to be. So just keep watching. So what makes the events at Fatima different to any other supernatural occurrence is that over the past 100 years, no one can fault it. Let me show you exactly what happened at Fatima 100 years ago. As you may already know, the mother of Jesus appeared to three children at Fatima, Portugal, during the summer of 1917. The children were aged seven, nine, and 10. It was right in the middle of the worst war the world had ever seen, World War I. The death of 38 million people testified to that fact. If World War I happened in 3000, 2000 BC, it would have wiped out the whole human race. The message the mother of Jesus was to give to the children was for the whole world, and it was directly from Jesus. The message was called, Peace Plan from Heaven, calling us to conversion, prayer, and penance. The message speaks of ways we should live our lives and how we can help others that are living very dangerously and who jeopardize their spiritual life. It is a warning as much as a teaching. Worse things happen if we don't listen, but great things happen if we do. Some of the messages that the children received was meant as a secret and to be kept for a later date. The children underwent a lot of threats and challenges to reveal these secrets. They were even threatened by their parents and the government authorities to confess that they made it all up. The government of the time even threatened the children with death, kidnapping them without their parents' consent. But the children said they would rather die for the truth of what they saw, even when they were threatened individually. Again, they were seven, nine, and 10 years of age. Revolt from the people allowed the children to be returned to their parents. The mother of Jesus appeared to the children on the 13th of each month for six months. It was on the third meeting that a great miracle was promised for the final visit so that everyone might believe. It was to be on the 13th of October, 1917. On that day, the 13th of October 1917, about 70,000 people gathered at Fatima to witness the miracle. Many didn't believe and made fun of those gathered. Even the media, the reporters that were present for the miracle, were there to prove it was all just a hoax. But the miracle happened. As the 70,000 people gathered in the rain, the children were together in prayer, kneeling in the mud. The eldest of the children pointed to the sky and shouted, The sun! Look at the sun! At that moment the clouds parted and the sun could be seen. It wasn't harmful to look at. People were looking directly at it. Then the sun started moving all around the sky until it seemed to fall towards the people getting bigger and bigger. Many ran, screaming, shouting, God have mercy. At that point, the sun stopped and drew back to its normal position. It was then the people noticed that the ground was dry and their clothes that had been drenched in water were dry. Everyone shouted miracle. Newspaper reporters who witnessed the event acknowledged it as a miracle in the Portuguese press. Everyone present concurred the miracle, but many who weren't present refused to concur. Scientists not present have explained that the miracle didn't happen because the event was not observed by astronomers. Others have experimented by looking at the sun and claimed that they too saw the sun dance. This could explain the people running in fear but not the dry clothes and the dry ground. Apparently the only people that observed the event were in a 50 kilometer radius. Skeptics claim that a ship with mirrors a UFO could have performed the miracle. Others said they, the people, were poorly educated and could have just imagined it out of excessive piety. The Catholic Church commenced a canonical inquiry. There have been many cases of the Catholic Church investigating visions and sightings that were found to be false 
or having a natural explanation and therefore dismissed. But in the case of Fatima, the Bishop of Liera Fatima officially declared the visions of Fatima as worthy of belief in October 1930, 13 years after the event. For my part, I wasn't moved by the miracle of the sun at Fatima. When I first heard of it, I dismissed it as simply a curious event. I did not consider what this could mean for my life and choices. But what I didn't dismiss was the mysterious strength that the children showed in standing up to their parents and the government in the face of death. They still kept to the truth of what they witnessed. The power at work in these children of seven, nine and 10 was something I missed in my life, which is why I inquired into the message and began again to pray. Here's what people are saying about Fatima. St. John Paul II, motherhood means concern for the life of the child. Now, if Mary is the mother of all mankind, then her concern for the life of man has universal extension. Mary's maternity has its beginning in her maternal care for Christ. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI We would be mistaken to think that Fatima's prophetic mission is complete. Here there takes new life the plan of God which asks humanity from the beginning, Where is your brother Abel? Your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Mankind has succeeded in unleashing a cycle of death and terror, but failed in bringing it to an end. In sacred scripture, we often find that God seeks righteous men and women in order to save the city of man, and he does the same here, in Fatima. When Our Lady asks, Do you want to offer yourselves to God, to endure all the sufferings which he will send you, in an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended, of supplication for the conversion of sinners? Cardinal Jose Policarpo of Portugal Pope Francis asked me twice to consecrate his new ministry to Our Lady of Fatima, the Cardinal said. In this apparition, Fatima, Pope Francis said, Mary invites us once again to prayer, penance and conversion. She asks us to not offend God anymore. She warns all mankind of the need to surrender to God, the source of love and mercy. Follow the example of St. John Paul II, great devotee of Our Lady of Fatima, let us listen attentively to the Mother of God and seek peace for the world. Praise be Jesus Christ, Francis said. The importance of Fatima is undeniable, both for believers and for non-believers, defends the President of the Republic, Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa, in an interview published in the newspaper Region of Liera on October 13, 2016. So if you're looking for peace of mind for your home and family in eternity, you've wasted enough of your time, energy and sanity on trying to meet your needs for security and comfort and status. How about working for the status of holiness? Picture right now the moment you achieve your most important life goal. You're looking happy, holy, and you're surrounded by the love of God and your friends and family. You truly can break free from sin and rediscover your spirit once again.